One of those is a real Apple iPhone charger and the other one is a Chinese copy. Can you tell the difference? They look almost the same. They have both the USB plug in it, a hexagonal shape body, the same size and dimensions, just a bit different marking. One of them tells it's designed by Apple in California. The other one says only made in China. So at least they don't claim it is made by Apple, but despite this, the shape is almost the same, it's almost identical from the outside. But the inside is a little bit different story. Let's do a test. This is the real one. It gives 5.12 volts at about 0.8 amps and the power drawn from mains is about 5.3 watts. And the other one Five point eleven volts charging at about zero point seven amps and the power from mains is five point one. It looks like it's identical copy. But let's take a look inside. So this is the real apple. I've already opened it up as you can see here. And when you remove the plug there are no cables. There are just two cords sticking into two holes. Then you can press the board out. And this is the real Apple board. You can see some MOSFET here, a lot of SMD components. They are very tiny. It looks really advanced, really modern construction. There's a common mode filter. There is a differential filter, two primary capacitors, of course a fuse here. It's in resin, there's a transformer, optocoupler here. Some driver IC here. There is the USB connector, tantalum capacitors here, at least three of them. The Schutke diode. And what about the Chinese copy? Let's open it up. There are wires coming from the plug. And here's the board. It's a traditional through hole board with no SMD components on it. Single sided board. It's a traditional power supply construction with a bridge, a capacitor, power transistor, auxiliary transistor, some capacitors, some resistors, diode, dash the switching transformer and optocoupler, interference capacitor, Zener diode, Schutke diode, capacitor at the output and the USB plug. And that's it. When you take a look at the layout, you can already see there's something wrong about this. This is the primary side. And this is the secondary side. And the isolation distance is only about one millimeter. Just one millimeter be between mains and you. That's definitely not good. And there is a black line on the board. It looks like made by hand using a permanent marker. And is it really supposed to improve the isolation? That's really ridiculous. And there is a questionable switching transformer. I'm really not sure how much isolated this one is. And there is an interference capacitor in between of primary and secondary side. It's 2.2 nano and rated only 1 kV. And I don't think it's good to have just 1 kV capacitor in between of mains and U. So I have made a schematic of it and it looks really horrible. There's just a mains, bridge rectifier and filter capacitor and the rest of the circuitry. 
There is no fuse, no fusible resistor, no interference filter, nothing. Just mains, bridge, capacitor. The switching part of it doesn't look so bad. There's a power transistor with a small transistor. It's a traditional two transistor switching circuit with a startup resistor. There's the primary winding, auxiliary winding. There's the optocoupler and Zener diode for regulation. There's the feedback to the transistor. There's the current sensing resistor. It looks okay, but the construction of the switching transformer is dodgy. This capacitor is also a little dodgy because it's only rated 1 kV and of course the board layout is also very questionable. This capacitor should be class Y1 capacitor with a test voltage of 8 kV, not just any cheap ordinary 1 kV capacitor. And it goes on. There is no fuse at the input, so what happens if something goes short in the circuitry? It will just burst into flames, because the only thing to limit the current is a 16 amp breaker somewhere in the installation, which reacts quite slowly. From the point of fire safety, it's also absolutely horrific. Another problem comes to my mind. There is no snubber network to protect the transistor against the inductive spikes from the transformer. There should be something like this. There should be one of those three circuitries to protect the transistor. And because there is none, the transistor is very likely to go short. So the inductive spike from the primary can very easily break down the transistor. It will break down from collector to emitter. And the only thing in series is now the very low resistance resistor, which will probably blow up. But the transistor is likely to break down also from collector to base. So you get the full voltage on the base. And because this is a low voltage transistor, it will also break down immediately and so in the case the transistors will short out, the current path will look like this. The transistors are shorted, that's short and the resistance of the bridge is also minute. And the only resistance in the circuit is the 7 ohm primary of the transformer. And of course there is no fuse. And the only current limiting factor is the DC resistance of the primary, which is 7 ohms. So you have 230 volts at a 7 ohm resistor divided by 7 and this is about 33 amps is going through the circuit. And times 230 and you get about 7.5 kilowatts. So you can try to imagine what happens with this tiny transformer when 7.5 kilowatts is being dissipated in it. And besides a fire, it will probably cause the primary to connect with the secondary because it will just basically completely melt, explode, evaporate or whatever. So this is just absolutely horrific. And what do you think? Should I simulate the short circuit of the transistor or should I measure the withstand voltage? So surprisingly, this has passed the 1 kV 1 minute test. So let's simulate the breakdown of the transistor. I have just shorted the pins of the transistor to simulate its short circuit. And let's see what happens and if it gets mains to the output. And this is definitely going to be a horrific idea, so never try this at home. So the explosion is over, you can see the mark on the paper here and the tracks on the primary side are completely exploded. It seems like the thin track from the mains input worked as a fuse and completely blew up. And there's a lot of blown up resistors. I'm not sure if the bridge rectifier and the small transistor is blown up. This capacitor seems to be blown up. But the transformer still looks surprisingly okay. So let's give it one more try and see what happens when we connect the mains directly to the primary of the transformer. So now it seems to have been more successful. The transformer blew up, even the wires blew up. And let's measure it. And here we go. Short it out. Never try to do this experiment, it's extremely dangerous. 
So definitely beware of those electrocution devices. And those chargers are being sold on eBay by numerous sellers. They can come in different colors as well. Sometimes they are as cheap as 90 cents. And in this listing, they are being sold side by side with fingernail stickers. Isn't this funny? Always use good quality chargers, not those fake dodgy ones. This is Dialgon Wild and see you in my next videos.